I create a geometry node and I import my environment using the file node. I modeled this very quickly in Houdini. You can use any model or environment you would like to. I create another geometry node for my Mixamo character. You can use the FBX character import node to bring it in. I also use the bone deform node to apply the animation. Delete every attribute we do not need with an attribute delete node. Since the animation is quite short, I use a retime node and set the speed to 0 0.35. I also create a time blend node in order to compute the subframe animation. And this is especially important if you're using a fast moving animation. The model for the saber hilt is in the GLTF format, which Houdini has its own node for importing. Make sure you compute point normals for this geometry, as we will use this later. I also use a match size node to move the geometry to the origin. I set the duration of our sequence to be 83 frames so that it matches the animation. Then I want to create a camera and I input the values I ended up using in the final project. I also create a null node and make it a parent of my camera which will be used for the camera animation. I then create one keyframe at frame one and one keyframe at frame 83 by pressing Alt and clicking. I set a value of 2.25 on the set axis on frame 83. I shift click the translation parameter to enter the animation editor and make sure the function is set to linear. Create a new geo node for all of our effects. Object merge in the saber hilt and the character. And attribute delete everything except for the point normal. I template the character geometry by control clicking the template flag. And then I align the saber hilt using a transform node to the character's hands. These were some values that worked for me. I isolate the character's hands in the primitive selection mode by pressing yes and then four. I then press delete with the primitive selected and set the blast node to delete non-selected. Create a time shift node and freeze the hands on frame one. I then create a point deform node and connect the saber hilt, the static hands and the moving hands. We can see that our saber hilt is now moving together with our character. Let's make the base shapes of the lightsaber. I start off by object merging the moving hilt we just created. I then use three blast nodes to isolate the base points where we want the three lightsaber beams to begin. Set the blast nodes to delete non-selected. Make sure you only have one point isolated in each blast node. Merge them all together. I use an enumerate node in points mode to get an ID attribute for the points. We can use the point normal we created earlier to offset the points along the normal vector. I will use a peak node for this. I make sure to uncheck the recompute normals toggle and I will peak the points separately. I set the length of the main saber part to 1.1 meters. and the side part to 0 0.2 meters. If we then merge the offset points together with the original points, we can use an add node to create curves with the index attribute we created. If we end up resampling the moving curves, the resample node will recompute every frame which might result in jittering point numbers. 
Because of this, I first time freeze the curves on the first frame before resampling and make sure to output the curve view attribute. I then use this attribute to reapply the animation of the moving curve based on the parametric UV coordinates in a point triangle. We can now see that we have reapplied the animation to the static curves and we will not be having any issues with changing point numbers. I then create a null from the curves and we are now ready to start creating our FX layers. What essentially makes up the lightsaber core are just a bunch of curves that are noised with different offsets. I create a for each number loop and split the long beam from the short ones. I do this so I can noise them separately with different frequencies and then merge them together after. I then create a point VOP which I connect to the small parts of the saber in the first input and the meta import node in the second input. I will use this to get the current iteration value of the loop. Inside the point VOP we can create an integer parameter and input the following expression to access the iteration value. I bind in our curve view attribute, which is what is going to be connecting into the position input on our noise. I use a turbulent noise set to zero centered Perlin noise and add this to the position. I expose all noise parameters by right clicking and going to vex swap options. I ended up using a high frequency, low amplitude noise with these settings for the small lightsaber beams. By double clicking the offset parameter, we can make the exposed parameter visible inside the VOP. I then compute a random value from the current iteration value and add it to the noise offset. We can also vary the amplitude of our noise along the curve by multiplying the noise with a ramp driven from our curve view attribute. Make sure you set the ramp to be a spline ramp. Tweaking this ramp lets us customize the shape of the lightsaber. I then copy this point VOP and connect the other output of our split node in the first input. This will be used to noise the long part of the lightsaber. Merge them together. As you can see, the noise settings will be slightly different. In order to color the lightsaber, I will use a point triangle. I will plug the merged point vops in the first input and the meta import node in the second input. I also set an alpha based on a ramp driven by curve view. For the final effect, I ended up using 150 iterations. Lastly, I created an AOV that will be used for the distortion effect in comp in a third point up. Again, I drive a noise from the curve view attribute. and make sure the output values have both positive and negative values, as this is what the distortion node in Nuke works best with. <laughs> 
I export the attribute as a color attribute called distortion. Because we have consistent point numbers every frame, we can compute the velocity with a trail node. I ended up rendering this as points. I use a scatter node and turn off force total count and put 20,000 in the density scale. Make sure to turn off relax iterations right away. All of these points will inherit the velocity of the original curves. I also give the points a p scale value with the attribute randomize node and set it to a really low value. I also want to use our initial curves and mesh them so we can use it as a geometry light when rendering. I use a sweep node with the custom shape ramp for this. This completes the core layer of our effect. For the second layer, all I did was just copy the geometry light setup and turn it into a volume with a VDB from Polygon's node. I then rendered it as an emissive volume and I just used it to fill in the sparse areas of the core layer in Comp. For the third layer, I again object merge the original curves and then I delete the small ones. I then time shift the curve and compute an out and a tangent vector with the orientation along curve node. I then attribute copy back these vectors onto the moving curve. We can see what happens when we disable the time shift node. Again, we create a for each number loop and append a point pop node like we did earlier. This is where we are going to create the lightning shapes. I start off by binding in the axis vector attribute we just computed, and I also generate a random value based on the iteration. The reason we multiply with pi times 2 is because 6.2, roughly, radians equals a full rotation. We can now compute a quaternion based on our random angle and our axis vector and rotate the normal out vector randomly around this axis each iteration. This is then being used to offset the position. I also multiply this vector with a ramp driven by curve u, just like we did before. We can also multiply this with just an overall amplitude parameter. From this same curve view attribute, we can compute a sine wave and multiply the curve view before it gets connected with some parameter to control how many repetitions we want. We can add a random offset to this per iteration, as well as offset it by time 
Finally, I would like to just add some general noise and offset it based on the iteration and the time. In addition, I also multiply this noise with our curve view ramp. I then add random colors with an attribute noise and give it a random offset based on each iteration. After this, I again create an alpha attribute in a point wrangle based on the curve view. Compute velocities, scatter some points, and create a random p scale per point just like our core layer. This is everything we need for our electricity layer. For our final two layers, I start off by object merging the no noised curves from our core layer and attribute delete everything except for the velocity and the alpha. After this, I create a point of up node which I will use to noise our velocities. I start off by adding a normalized curl noise to the velocity and then I multiply it with a one-dimensional anti-aliased flow noise. I also create a mass attribute from our anti-aliased flow noise, which we will use in a particle sim. As we will use our smoke layer to advect the spark layer later, we will first have to create the smoke. I scatter some points on our curves. Then I give them a density attribute of 1 using the pyro source node. After this, I rasterize the density and the velocity attribute and do a basic smoke sim. Now I want to create a particle sim that we will use for our sparks. I use a pop wind node and multiply the air resist parameter with our mass attribute we created earlier. We also want to advect our particle sim with the velocity field of our smoke. We will create the sparks using the spark trail nodes in Houdini. <laughs> 
With this, we now have all of our FX layers. Now I want to give each of our FX layers, as well as our environment, one separate render node each. We will render our main layer, sparks and electricity in Mantra, and our volume layer, environment and character in Redshift. I also import the GeoLite geometry we created earlier and use this in an RS mesh light. I make sure to enable Velocity Blur for our main layer and our spirals, and then I import our character and our environment in separate render nodes. I have the character and the saber hilt in the same render node, but I will assign different materials. I also make sure to compute their velocity with a trail node. I will now show you the final shaders for all the layers and all the render nodes which I copied over from my original file. For the main layer, I bind in the color attribute and multiply it with the alpha. I also give them a low opacity to get that additive look. I also bind and export the distortion attribute as well as create a mask attribute that we will use in comp. The shader for the electricity spirals are pretty much the same. For the sparks, I also create an H AOV that I will use in comp. The redshift volume shaders are all very simple. For the character and the saber hilt materials, remember to assign them separately using the material nodes we created inside of the render node. For the environment itself, I am using the curvature to mix colors and I am also using some noises to create roughness and bump. For the render nodes, I encourage you to pause the video, but I am rendering the mantra layers at twice the camera resolution. I also make sure to output any AOVs, or image plane as they are called in mantra, that we exported in the shader. For the environment render node, I have a bunch of AOVs and I also turn on the volume scattering which will become our atmosphere fog. For the comp, it's actually extremely simple. I start off by bringing in the environment renders 
And then I shuffle all the different lighting passes and color grade them separately. I then merge them together with merge nodes set in plus mode. After doing this, I always make sure to copy back my original alpha with a copy node. Since I'm going to be using the C defocus node, I want to also copy back the depth channel from our original render. I also do some denoising after this. For the volume passes, I just do some light color correction and merge them on top of our environment render. For the FX layers, I start off with the main core layer. I shuffle out the mask AOV. And multiply the render with this. I also do some desaturation and general grading. The next pass is going to be the electricity layer. Since we have random colors, we can choose to shuffle just one of the RGB channels into every output, which will give us the illusion of disconnected electricity branches. I also do some grading on this and give it a red color. I then merge it on top of our core layer with the plus node. For the sparks layer, I use the age AOV we created to have it fade off over the duration of its life. I also grade this and then I merge it on top of the other layers with the merge node set to plus. I then use two AP glow nodes, one for a general glow and the other one with an expression that makes it flicker in the intensity parameter. I then merge both of these on top of our renders with the plus merge once again. For the distortion AOV we created. Since we rendered the Mantra FX layers at twice the resolution, we have to use a reformat node to match it to the 1920 by 1080 resolution of our volume and environment re renders. I will use this to create the heat distortion effect by plugging it into the dist map input on the X distort node. I also slightly distort the lightsaber itself. We can now merge our FX on top of our other layers, but we have to make sure to reformat it to the same resolution again before doing this. To finalize the comp, I just do some color adjustments with the hue shift node, and then I create some grain based on an inverted luminance alpha mask. I then add some vignetting and cinematic bars with some gizmos. Then I use an OCO color space node and output it to sRGB. I then export the sequence as a .mov file and make sure I toggle the raw data toggle in the right node. 